Hi, my name is James Samuel and I've been involved in facilitating the growth of transition towns in New Zealand for almost the last two years. Throughout that time, I've been attentive to finding simple tools that could enable community resilience initiatives become successful and meet their goals. I've come up with six steps that can be applied to a single project or to an aspect of a bigger one as a way to get that project started and keep it moving toward its goals. In order to begin, we need to name it. Giving the project a name is a simple but powerful gesture, and using your hand and eyes to put words on paper may be the first time you give physical form to the idea. Having done that, you need to find a team. Find people you can work with. It may only be two or three people, but look around for those who have the skills and qualities you need and who have the networks that can add value to the team. And check that you have a common vision and make some agreements for how you want to work together. Define your purpose, your vision, and list some measurable targets, and agree on how long you're willing to stay with the project and when you want to be moving on from it. Having done that, begin communicating about the project to many people. This is where you tell the story and elaborate on the vision. Backcasting is a great tool for this. So you stand at some point in the future and describe the world as you see it now that you've succeeded in fulfilling your dream. Use the words to paint pictures. There are so many ways to communicate, but here are a few of them. Phone calls, meetings, casual conversation, radio, TV, local newspapers, national newspapers, magazines, flyers, posters. You might want to create your own website or post information on other people's sites. Email, Twitter, social networks, YouTube. And don't forget the arts, drama, sculpture, critical mass events. And then there's film. You can screen other people's films that relate to your project, or you can make your own. If you need more ways to communicate, look around and notice how other people spread their ideas and use the ones that are applicable to you and that touch the people you need to touch. Now that you've put yourself out there, communicated your vision, created pictures in people's minds, now's the time to engage in active listening. Engage people in dialogue. Ask questions and listen attentively. Record people's responses and be prepared to be offended and misunderstood because this is the time to seek to understand other people and their views. What they tell you might reveal better ways to meet your goals and save you a lot of effort. Gather data, ideas, criticisms, have cafe meetings, more phone conversations, set up open space events where people self-organize and contribute freely. Use World Cafe. Calling a circle is a simple and yet incredibly powerful dialogue tool which anyone can use to good effect. Attend meetings of other groups, attend public events, have a presence at the local market or expo. During the course of this listening phase, you'll be looking for opportunities to enroll people and have them commit to progress and evolve your project. In government, corporate and the business world, employment contracts are a common tool. They serve to build a resource list which gives the project energy. And human commitment is the fuel that can drive a project forward. So use templates to record agreements, and it can be as simple as filling in the blanks of what, who, when, how many, and where. And once a commitment is made and recorded, then the next phase can move ahead with confidence. This is the work. This is where the rubber hits the road. Now that we've completed the dialogue, got people's commitment, we are in a position to move forward and act on the plan. This is where work will be defined and schedules, actions undertaken, and where people assume roles within the project. You may need a manager, an admin person, someone to handle the accounts, a media and a PR person, and of course, the diggers. And in all of this, don't be afraid of hierarchy. It has its place, and some of the most effective organizations make good use of lines of command and structures of accountability. Think of volunteer fire brigades working in emergency situations and dealing with life and death. They have an effective and necessary hierarchy. From all of this effective action, we come to the point where we can deliver. The conclusion of each cycle is the delivery of the target set when you first teamed up. So what will your delivery look like? How you deliver will affect how people receive what you have created and how they reward you for all your work, and it lays the foundation for the next cycle. Now that you've delivered the goods and met the targets, now it's time to celebrate before continuing the process again, expanding the vision, establishing new goals, setting new targets, and so on. If you can dream it, you can make it so. To borrow from a great man, your imagination is a preview of life's coming attractions.